Hello, everyone. This is Sister Girl coming back to you with Sisterhood Book Club. Now, today I want to discuss this book, Suspicious, by Shasha Campbell. And if you go back on my videos, you will find out that she was the first author that I did when I first came on YouTube, which her book was entitled Confessions. So go back and watch it if you missed that one. And that book was good, and then she came back and gave us a doozy. Now, I don't have a book trailer, but I'm going to read the back of this book here, and I'm going to let you um, judge it. Okay. As the owner of Situations, the hottest beauty salon on the south side of Chicago, Noelle has a different line to the private lives of her clients. But when an abandoned baby girl appears on her doorstep, Noelle finds herself at the center of a personal drama. Could the baby be her husband or maybe her grown son? Both men deny it, but Noelle is sure one of them is lying. Meanwhile, Noelle employees are discovering that their own romantic relationships harbor a secret or two. The truth isn't always pretty, but can they find the strength to live with it or with the man they love? This book here, I have to um, tell you right now that this is not a teen book. This is an adult book. It has mature contents in it, and I do rate this book rated aura for mature audience only. And um, if you're watching this, it's okay to watch it because I'm not going to get into the graphic details or nothing. I'm just going to give you the little details of what's going on with the characters and things like that. Okay? So, um, the first thing is, let's start with Noelle. You, um, Noelle is the owner of Situations, like they say, and um, is a booming business. The business booming. And Noelle finds herself unhappy because she's finding herself more and more getting detached from her husband. And her husband is a teacher. And he teaches at a university. And Noelle finds herself uh, wanting more besides just her business. So she decides the day of that she's going to go home and um, kindle, uh, rekindle the fire that was once there in the relationship. So everything is going fine. Um, their son is now in college, and their son um, um, is spoiled as hell. And they um, don't have any more worries. They can just go on. Both of them are doing well. You know, they both of them have jobs and things like that. So they're doing very well. They find themselves, you know, working more than they're taking vacations. So they said they're going to take a vacation. So they had planned a vacation and all that. Then a day or two pass, and Pop comes his baby on the front porch. Only thing i got to say is OMG. It was just, I mean, I really felt the um, pain of Duell because she was like heartbroken because she she thinking that this can't be my husband, this has to be my son, but I have always taught him to, you know, protect himself and things like that. The baby has to be my granddaughter. It was a girl. So she was just like really upset. She couldn't believe that whoever he was messing around with would do this, you know. So she was like, she calls her son at school and tells him about it. And he tells her, Mama, I don't have any kids. If I had any kids, they would have called and told me. You know, I would have had a baby. So she's saying, you're lying. You need to come home. This baby looks just like you. And he's like, what? You know, so he's confused. So he said, okay, Mom, I'm going to come home. But he didn't come straight home like she told him to. He waited for like weeks and weeks. But in the meantime, she finds herself looking and searching high and low for the mother to find out who could this be. 
And in the meantime, she has this best friend called Whitney. And Whitney, she's really trifling. And she's pregnant. She tells, you know, Noelle, she, you know, the father don't want to, you know, she's cool on the father. She's just going to raise her baby. But then she finds out that Whitney um, is pregnant and is pregnant by her son. And Whitney is the godmother of Noelle's son. And remind you, she's older than, so she's a cougar. And so I really felt Noelle pain when she dropped the mom on her. She finally had to tell her. So it was just like Noelle was just getting all the badness in the book, all the badness. And when her husband, you know, when the baby came, the husband was telling her culture and services, and she's telling her, you know, the the husband, no, I'm not for the culture and services. So. You can forget that. So he said, okay, fine. I'm going to do me. So he says, you want to sit here? You want to babysit? You know, we don't have time for each other, whatever, anymore. Fine. So he goes out with the fellas. And, I mean, and she, Noelle, is just so miserable. Um, It's just, I mean, I really was feeling her pain through the book uh, as it kept going and going and going. And the son didn't make it no better. Um, and when he came home, he was acting the butthole, and oh my goodness, it was just, her story was just like, really like, it wasn't sad, but you will feel the pain. Then you have the, uh, Tiffany. Now, Tiffany, she works at, um, situations, and she does hair. And Tiffany, she's young, and she finds herself, um, in a relationship, and she never, um, She's still a virgin. She's never had relations with anyone. And she comes across this, this guy, and he he perpetrates to be one way, but he's another. He I should say two faces. He has two faces. Um, the kind face she always see, but in the end, she wind up seeing the ugly side of him. And uh, to make, a, make her story short and to the point, she um she has a controlling mother. Her mother controls um was controlling her life and her sister's life where her sister cut it off. She left and went to the Marines and was never heard from again. Then she winds up, um, Tiffany winds up staying with her mother and her mother winds up um running her off, running in, running her into her fiance arms. She moves out of her mother's house and um She's very happy with her fiance. She's very happy. But you know how uh females talk and stuff. This is a salon. So she um you know, she told one person that um, you know, she never had relations and you know, they make some jokes about it and things like that. So it's like a pressure on her. So but she's holding her she holding her. She's not giving it up. She can you know, she she's holding it. So, and, you know, the ladies at the shop is, pre you know, giving pressure. And then when she goes home, you know, her fiancé is pressuring her to do it. And But she, she she's a strong. She's strong. She's very strong. So Tiffany, um, so he do finally convince her. Well, we're going to get married maybe in a month or so. So you're going to, we're going to get married. I gave you this ring and, you know, uh, you're mine. So what's the problem? So she thinks about it. She thinks about it. And she winds up um, giving in. And so after she gives in, then we have a, 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 another character named Candace. Now, Candace, she um, winds up... Um, Ha she has um Candace work at a free clinic. She has a daughter. She has a uh, baby daddy drama. She finds herself um getting portions of the child support she's supposed to be getting and she just you know, she's struggling to um provide for her and her daughter and she comes across uh this information at the at the free clinic on Tiffany fiance, and um, you know they say patient privacy 
um, is the law. And so she was doing overtime one day, and when she found out um, the information, she was, you know, putting files and stuff in the cabinet and seeing his name. And when she seen his name, she was like, oh, my God. Well, I know that Tiffany, you know, haven't had relations with this guy because Tiffany hadn't told anyone that she did. And so when she found out, she finally told Tiffany. So when she did tell Tiffany the information that she found on him, it was just, it was just, oh, I felt her pain. Oh, I felt her pain. So the information led to her um, waiting until the day before they were going to get married, which was his bachelor party. And so she supposed to have been having her, um, her party, and she winds up um, not, um, her, she supposed to have been having her bridal shower, and she winds up not even going to her bridal shower. She goes to the bachelor party and sneaks in and finds her fiancé in a, a position that you would want to find your fiancé in with this stripper. And so she goes berserk, and she tells him off, and he, then the second, the second side, you know, I think he had one side of face, too. That second side of face winds up showing he tells her about his, you know, about herself, and she tells him about himself, and, I mean, all the stuff just hit the fan. So she is just battled. She just, she's done. You know, she was so in love with this guy. She, you know, she had relations the first time, had relations with him, and she was just outdone with herself. And then when make it then turns around, you know, uh, Candace um, winds up um, getting fired from her job because someone emailed and let it out. Um, um, no, 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 I'm sorry, no, that's a different part. No, um, what happened was he called Candace's job. That's what he did. He called Candace's job, told Candace's boss what happened, that the um, that she was spreading rumors that wasn't true and that um, – patient privacy was the issue and that he was going to sue her and the clinic. So Candace wound up getting fired. That's what happened. Now, um, so I think it came in an email or he called one of the two. Anyway, so that was Candace's story. And then you have Chauncey. Now, Chauncey, he is this fine, fine man that um, was hired by Noel. He works at the, at situations, and he is a pet. He does pedicures. He massages women's feet, and he just makes them feel so good. And so he has women coming from everywhere just because of his looks and the way that he treats women. So he finds himself, um, you know, in situations and he finds himself uh, having different relations with these women in the salon. It was just easy, easy to do. But then he comes across this this psychopath that uh, can't take no for an answer, is over with, and stalks him and just makes his life a living hell. So Chauncey finds himself wind up um, – Falling in love, finally falling in love, found the woman that he wanted to be with. And then he finds out that, um, you know, they had came to agreement that with him and the female that he had came to agreement saying, well, whatever is in the past, we're going to tell and we're just going to clean the slate. So she told him everything and he didn't tell her everything. So his past comes back and hunts him by the stalker. The stalker emails the the girl that he winds up being with and then all hell breaks loose. He loses, you know, um the girl and it's just it was just I felt this pain because his his past wasn't bad for him not wasn't that bad for him to not tell and to explain the situation that he was in. 
he was in a situation that uh, he was lied on, and uh, it it had it held some consequences that did not um, was not his fault. So he lost his he lost behind the behind what happened. He lost his mother, and then he wind up um, losing. Um, um, having a relationship with his father because his mother kept his father away from him because she found out that um, uh, that the father was having a relationship with someone else, was cheating and stuff. So she took it upon herself to say, "Well, you can't see your son anymore." And but he, but the mother had Chauncey believing that his father was going to come some days and he would sit there, he would cry, the father wouldn't show up and she just was scandalous. The mother was scandalous. And when the father they had a family reunion and he found out he had a sister, he um was talking to his father. His father told him the truth that I did send you gifts on your birthday. I did send you letters and things like that. And and he was like, No you didn't but to find out that the mother kept all this away from Away from him, all the gifts, all the gifts and stuff that he received from his father, she sent it to the goodwill, and it was just a mess. This book here, I give five out of five stars. This book is so good; it's highly recommended. Like I said, adult fiction. This is adult fiction. Go out and get your copy. I hope you enjoyed the review, and I didn't give too much away. It's 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 whole lot more than what I say. I can't even, I don't even have the time to go detail, 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 but it's a whole lot more, and it's a page turner. Okay, so hope you enjoyed it. God bless, and talk to you later. Bye-bye.